let me start by asking everyone a question. Does anyone know what a stem cell is? Stem cell. Stem. Stem cell research? Stem cell. Does anyone know what that is? I've heard of it, but I'm that not is. sure of the, the details. Aren't they extracted from DNA? Some are, every are. But what stem cells are, are unspecialized cells. They can take on the function of different types of cells. What this essentially means is that stem cells, especially embryonic stem cells, have the possibility to replace damaged and flawed cells. They are seen as a potential cure to diseases such as diabetes and cancer. As good as this all sounds, there's a huge ethical debate over the use of embryonic stem cells, which has long halted further funding and research in this country. While individuals in the field have to consider not only their morals, but the morals of others. It's common knowledge that embryonic stem cells have the potential to enhance and prolong life. The debate over funding is stopping advances in the medical field. The United States cannot afford to lose any more of its great scientific minds to other countries where research is funded and supported. Politicians need to band together soon so they can make further advancements. Embryonic stem cells show the most promise out of any stem cell. Scientists believe that embryonic stem cells can, in the near future, revolutionize medicine. According to the article, The Promise of Stem Cells by Helen, Helen Gavin, researchers from all over the world have claimed that stem cells can differentiate in the structured as varied as liver, pancreas, intestine, brain, heart, bone, cartilage, and even fat. If they possess this potential, there's absolutely no reason we should not conduct research in order to reach these capabilities. Dr. Mamet Oz at Columbia University says, our current limitations as far as funding goes do not allow us to understand how the cells repair the diseased or degenerated tissue or cell. By increasing funding, we can better understand exactly how the stem cells work. <laughs> Many who oppose further research and funding cite that a human embryo is needed in order to obtain an embryonic cell. Scientists know that embryonic stem cells cannot be established without the sacrifice of at least a few embryos from the article of the promise of stem cells. I personally don't even see the issue here, though. Scientists only work with the fetal tissue. They're not responsible for the embryo's death at all. Those who oppose abortion should endorse embryonic stem cell research, because in a way, scientists are finding some good out of the tragedy. We live in a country where taxpayers' dollars support killing prisoners for their crimes. Why not use some of that taxpayers' money in order to fund something that could be so beneficial? Others oppose research and funding because they link stem cells with cloning. It is true that Dolly, the well-known cloned sheep, came from scientists working on embryonic component stem cells. But recently, many governments have banned cloning in a fear of a human being cloned. I do not agree with cloning a full-grown animal or human, but this shows the true potential of these cells. If we clone a sheep, we should be extremely close to learning how to clone organs such as livers and kidneys of humans. If we could unlock how to do this with no side effects, we could save many lives. In the U.S. alone, there's over 100,000 people waiting for a transplant. If we could clone these organs, we wouldn't have this problem. Scientists have recently made huge advancements in research on animals such as mice. Mice and humans have roughly 99% of their genes in common. So if advancements are made on mice, hopefully human trials will soon follow. Scientists using embryonic stem cells in rodents have managed to treat and cure diabetes, says Howard Gavin, a researcher in the UK. This has obviously caused a stir of excitement in the scientific community. If we can apply what we have learned in the trials with mice to humans, the possibilities are endless. The article, Stem Cell Therapy by Lightsell, says it best. Banning research now would be like banning research on airplanes 150 years ago just because they developed the car. Even with limited funding, advancements in research have been great in recent years. Currently, private donations fund all embryonic stem cell research in the United States. This needs to change. Federal funding could attract many great minds to the United States and keep many more from leaving. Places such as the UK and Israel have been attracting scientists from the US for years since their governments openly fund and support all research. If research was supported by the government in the US, advances in medicine could happen much faster with much better results. Who in this room knows someone who's affected by disease like cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's? Just about everyone. How great would it be if embryonic stem cells could be the solution to all these diseases? They have this potential. 
We as a nation just need to invest the time and money. Our government needs to quit wasting precious time and take a stance now. Although it would be hard to get everyone to agree on whether or not to support research and funding, some kind of progress is needed. President Obama's recent lift on some of the bans George W. Bush put in place is seen as promising. There are many hopeful people waiting for stem cells to be an option in their treatment. How can you tell a paraplegic in which stem cells could potentially give them the ability to walk again that using them would be unethical? Many, including myself, hope to soon see the day while they're an option for treatment. Want to hand it out here? Uh, this is Christopher Reeve. Well, a lot of people know him better as Superman. That was his prominent role. He was an actor. And in 1995, he also rode horses competitively, and he was jumping and fell off at first. And he actually crushed two vertebrae in his back and became a quadriplegic. And if you see that long picture when he's in the wheelchair, that's why he couldn't even use his lungs without help. Um, he was one of, if not the biggest advocate for stem cell research in the United States. <coughs> in 2003, he visited Israel and saw just how behind we were. Um, he saw the people in Israel that were able to walk after years of being infused with embryonic stem cells that rebuilt the tissue cells, even bone that they lost. And during the Bush presidency, he advocated that uh, more stem cell lines be opened up as long as they weren't responsible for the embryo's death, but unfortunately they, they actually cut it instead. Um, he founded the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation that researches embryonic stem cells extensively, and sadly he died in 2004, just a year after he regained motion in his fingers, in his hand, and he could feel um, hot and cold again, which was remarkable. They said he'd never be able to do that.